So today let's deep dive into L4 load balancer. Load balancer is something that you all have always heard of. Uh, but more importantly, what you would hear as a distinction is L4 and L7 load balancer. Uh, today we'll focus on L4, L7 will cover sometime later and it's something that you almost always use, but L4 is where a lot of misconception floats around. So let's dig deeper into L4 load balancers and see what they really are. So the stuff that we are going to cover today is uh, what are load balancers again very brief scheme through it why we need them uh, a very brief intro of osi model because so that we understand l4 and l7 load balancer uh, then we dig deeper into l4 load balancer and we understand two modes in it one is pass through mode second one is proxy mode right so let's jump right into it to talk about what are load balancers and then osi model load balancers are essentially there to balance the load <laughs> what amazing definition it is but yeah the idea is you have bunch of machines in the back end you have a load balancer in the front end you make a request to the load balancer load balancer depending on some logic figures out which back end server to forward the request to forwards the request gets the response sends the response back to the user right so it's a standard standard load balancer whose I the idea is it balances the load among the back end servers which is the servers behind the load balancer and abstracting out the elasticity of infrastructure. So even if these machines, the number of machines behind a load balancer increase or decrease, for your end user, it doesn't matter. It interacts with load balancer and bam, your requests are handled. Now, OSI model is a conceptual framework um, and each layer essentially interacts with a layer above it and a layer below it. So L4 load balancers are load balancers that operate at the layer four of the OSI model, which is essentially your TCPs and UDPs, which is essentially your transport layer. And L7 are application, is application layer, and your L7 load balances operate at application level, which means at HTTP, WS, which is WebSocket, SSH, whatever you may want to do, you do on those, or you do on those lines. And so L4 load balances operate at transport level, and L7 operates at application level. What does it really mean? What it really means is that a load balancer who operates at an L4 level only has information till the TCP protocol layer, right? It doesn't know, it doesn't peek into the data to see if it is an HTTP request or if it is a DNS resolution that's happening. It doesn't look into the data. It has no idea what it is. What it deals with is the basic TCP IP, uh, it's the basic TCP UDP protocol that you have and all it has is that information. But the moment a load balancer chooses to dig deeper into, hey, what data are you transmitting? Hey, is this HTTP? Hey, what are the headers? That is, that becomes your L7 load balancer, right? So the whole idea is how deep your load balancer goes into the data then it becomes an L7. If it doesn't, then it as L4, which is at the TCP and the UDP level. Right? Okay, awesome. Now that is out of the picture. Now, what is load balancer? It helps you balance and distribute the load across multiple backend servers. We all know that. It ensures reliability, scalability and availability. Reliability implies that even if few machines go down, your system is still up and running. Right? So because a load balancer is abstracting out the elasticity of your infrastructure, so even if one of the machine goes down, no problem. Right? Scalability, it means if you want to handle more scale, you add more nodes, client remains unaffected because client is anyway talking to just a load balancer. Right? And availability, again, very similar to reliability. Availability is all about that even if you machines go down, something's not reachable, under high load, whatever, your system is still highly available. Okay, now let's dig deeper into two types of load balancers, L4 and L7. As we, as I briefly explained, L4 load balancer, they operate at transport layer, which means all they have information is about the IP address, the protocol, which is TCP or UDP to make the routing decisions. It's not looking into the data on what it contains, right? So that's why it's L4 load balancer. Your AWS network load balancer falls into this category. Your HA proxy under TCP mode falls into this category and your Linux IP table falls into this category. I'll show you an example of it in five minutes. Second is L7 load balancer, 
uh, we are not going to dig deeper into L7 in this one. We might cover it sometime later. But L7 load balancer is that they operate at application level. They peek into the data. So they know it's HTTP request. They know these are the headers that are passed. They know this is the URL that is getting called. They know this is the cookie information that is being sent. They have that those details and they use all of this detail to make the routing decision. Right? So the whole idea is how much I am peeking into the data that tells me if it's an L7 or not. If you have heard of it, Nginx, Nginx is a classic L7 load balancer example, also called reverse proxy. The idea is given that it has access to the headers and whatnot, it can manipulate them if it requires. So you can do, in case of Nginx, you can do URL rewrite, you can add headers, you can remove headers, you can manipulate the request, you can route the request, you can do a lot of fancy stuff, right? But again, that operates at an L7 level. Okay, enough of this, let's dig deeper into L4 load balancer. So how it works. So L4 load balancer works in two modes. First is the pass through mode. Second is the proxy mode. We'll dig deeper into pass through mode because proxy mode is something which is easy to digest and it's how most L7 load balancers also work. But let's talk about the pass through mode, which is typically a more common configuration of an L7 load balancer. So in case of pass through mode, you have few very interesting things. So as the name suggests, it is passed through, which means there is no machine on which the connection is made and then it routes it. Essentially, the connection is not broken at a place. The connection is literally passed through the machine. That's why it's a L4 load balancer in a pass through mode. So ideally, when you think of a load balancer, you would think of it, hey, my client connects to load balancer and my load balancer connects to the backend server. So you have a load balancer managing two TCP connections, one from client to load balancer, second load balancer to backend server. Right? But in pass through mode, the same connection is passed through the client to the backend. So load balancer literally forwards the packet to the appropriate node. That's what it does. It doesn't break the TCP connection and form another TCP connection. Rather, it just passes through. It just lets the connection pass through it to the appropriate node. Right? So which means there is only one TCP connection starting from client to the backend. Right? Now, what does it mean? Let's take a slightly concrete example. So let's say my load balancer's IP address is 192. 0.168, 0.1, 100. We'll call it machine 100. That's your load balancer. And machine 101 and 102 are your backend servers. So IP address is 192, 168, 1, 101, 192, 168, 1, 102. I'll just call it 100, 101, 102. Now, what happens is when your client sends the packet, right, that I want to connect to this load balancer, and which means essentially go to one of the backend servers that I have, Client sends the request to this IP address, so 192.168.1.100. So all the clients that you have, they send request to 192.168.1.100, which is the IP address of the load balancer. Load balancer, upon receiving this request, the packets, it decides where to forward the request to. Now here, because it is an L4 load balancer, it cannot peek into the data, so all it has is source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port, and some very primitive metadata to decide which of the two or three or five or 10 backend servers I should connect to, or I should forward the request to. So load balancer uses this primitive information to decide that this incoming request should go here. Right? So that's how it decides which server to pick to forward the request to. Right? Now, some popular algorithms that it uses is random. So it literally picks one of them at random. It You might use hash based where it can consider either a source IP hash or a destination IP or not destination, but either a source IP hash or a combination hash or whatever. It depends on the load balancer that you're using. So IP tables, NT, um, IP tables, NF tables, whatever you are using. It depends on that, on how it can possibly route the request to which of the server. <coughs> so this is how it looks like. Now the flow, the end to end flow of this is 
your client opens a TCP connection. Your client opens a TCP connection to load balancer. Right? Now, load balancer rewrites the packet to either 101th machine or 102th machine. Right? Now, the request thus went to 101 or 102. Let's say it went to 101. 101 gets the request, handles the request, gets the response. Now, sends the response back. The response goes through the load balancer to this. Now, when it does that, your client still thinks that it is talking to LB. Right? So now there are two modes, masculine and not. So your client can choose to think it's directly connected to the backend server, or it's getting response from the backend server, or it can masquerade it and say, okay, okay I'm going through the load balancer. Right? So it depends on how you would want to do it. But your load balancer essentially transparently forwards the request in both the direction that it wants. That's the whole idea of a load balancer anyway. Let's take like little code code example that you can do it. Now, if you are using IP tables, so there is a simple command called IP tables, IP tables that you can use to configure this load balancer. You can literally have a Linux machine acting as a load balancer and you configure the IP tables on that machine, which says that I want to route the request to this machine and this machine you define your pre-routing you define if you want to masquerade or not and you define which machines are behind you so you are configuring that ip table probability is 50 percent you want to route to destination 101 or destination port is 80 and route to destination 102 and you are defining your probability of doing it. So 0.5% here, which is 50, well, I said uh, 0.5 here, which means 50% here and 50% there. So rest of them here, right? And then you configure it in a post routing or a masquerade. You configure it in a masquerade mode, which says that, hey, I want to hide my backend response behind my load balancer's IP. So when it goes through it, it rewrites the header, uh, the, the IP. Right? This way, your client would not know that which backend server responded. It gets the response and your load balancer forwards it there. So this is your pass through mode. Again, to summarize, your request from client goes to a backend server through the load balancer and it's the same TCP connection that goes here. Now you can start seeing that you do not have enough flexibility to do anything here. It's literally like IP based routing kind of stuff that you are doing, but nothing fancy that you can apply as your load balancer logic. But this is a standard L4 load balancer and how that is configured. Now, let's dig deeper into the proxy mode. So we looked at pass through mode. Now let's look at proxy mode. So what proxy mode does is proxy mode is opposite of pass through mode. So in pass through mode, your same connection goes from client to backend via load balancer. But here in proxy mode, there are two TCP connections. So your client connects to the load balancer and at this load balancer, the TCP connection terminates and load balancer establishes another connection to a backend server, depending on your logic. So in proxy mode for an L4 load balancer, one TCP connection is established from client to load balancer and another from load balancer to backend server. So when it gets the response, it forwards the response back to the client. That's the flow here. Right? Now, which means in this case, you have two TCP connections. Now, the core idea being load balancer is fully handling the handshake from client to LP. Right? Now, this way, given that your connection from a client to your load balancer is actually ending here, load balancer has a lot more control to decide which of the backend server should it select. Because now your load balancer is free to choose. Now load balancer has the code control and it can check the number of connections on each of the backend servers, the latencies that it is observing at backend servers. It can check the health status of this backend servers and then decide to which backend server I could forward the request to. So this way with L4 load balancer operating at operating in proxy mode, can do a much more dynamic routing. It can do least connection based. It can do weighted round robin because there is a control that you have on where it can go to. So HA proxy, NVOIS and Nginx stream falls under this category. The idea is simple. You have the control 
because your one TCP connection is ending, another is getting created. Now you decide which backend server to create. You ping, you poll, you check, you do whatever. But still, the idea remains the same. Your load balancer is not peeking into the data to see what data you are transmitting, what HTTP packet is it, or HTTP 1 or 2 or 3 or whatever you are using. It doesn't peek into the data. It literally just, just refers to source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port and decides where to route. Right. Okay. So the real question is, when do you decide which one to use? So you typically decide proxy mode when you need your connection level observability, like RDTs, drops, whatnot. When you want this flexible routing logic, like little smarter routing logic, right? And you want your rate limiting to be done. You want your retries to be done again at the TCP level, not at user level, but just at source IP level. If you'd want to do something, you can do it, right? Because your L4 load balancer in pass through mode cannot, it's just literally passing through it. There is no connection that is getting terminated here. So how do you configure it? This is a very simple, dead simple HA proxy config, similar config looks for Nginx as well, which you can configure to run your Nginx machine or your HA proxy machine as a L4 load balancer, right? which terminates one, establishes another connection and lets the request go through it. Right. You can configure your backend servers, balancing with round robin, server is this, you provide the IP address and you do health check and whatnot. Go through the documentation, chat GPTs and Geminis and clouds are your friend. I would highly recommend do a quick and dirty prototype. You just need three, four containers, four containers to run and you would have your own very simple standalone load balancer up and running. Right. So yeah, this is all about L4 load balancer. Uh, some things that I would want to re-highlight is the core difference between an L4 and an L7 is about how much your load balancer is willing to peek into the data. If it does not peek into the data, what protocol is it, manipulations of headers and nothing, and it's not doing anything there, then it becomes an L4 load balancer, otherwise it becomes an L7 load balancer. And in case of L4, you have pass-through mode and a proxy mode. Right? Pass-through is very common, which just lets the request go through. Proxy is where your connection ends, another connection establishes, and then it decides how to route the request. Right? So yeah, this is the gist of an L4 load balancer. Again, highly recommend you to quickly, dirtily prototype things. It's always fun to code stuff. Right? Awesome. So yeah. This is all what I wanted to cover today. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.